What's happened, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, the 9th of June. Welcome to the fucking joint. The joint is brought to you by DraftKings. Listen, NBA season is in full fucking kickoff playoff mode. Money is easy to be made right now. The lines are still soft. The first round just fucking finished winning the second round. You got Brooklyn, Milwaukee. You got fucking Utah against the Clippers coming off a big fucking victory off the Mavericks. And you got motherfucking the Sixers playing fucking Atlanta. Atlanta's already up. Uh, I don't know if they won last night. I got to check and see. I didn't fucking put the bet in anything last night. But DraftKings is fucking solid. You understand me? This is the way to go. Basketball ain't your thing. Fucking tremendous lines on baseball. DraftKings will send you an email every day about a special they're doing. Whether this guy's going to score the over for a dollar, win $55. The casino's great. The sports book is great. And I fucking love them. So do me a favor. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and press in code Joey and be ready for the whole week of fucking basketball playoffs. You don't want to miss this, especially tonight. We got tremendous games on. I think it's Brooklyn at Milwaukee. They beat them already by 30. What do you think is going to happen to Milwaukee? Who the fuck knows? You are going to know once you fucking download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and they also have a fantasy app that'll rock your motherfucking world. Both of them press code Joey but there's something I gotta tell you real quick must be 21 or over go get your fucking skateboard cocksuckers I don't need your fucking gambling through here you're too young to be fucking gambling resident New Jersey fucking Indiana and uh, Tennessee all right new customers only restrictions do apply read the fucking draft kings whole thing before you sign in and if you have a gambling problem call 1-800-WITH-IT in fucking Indiana or if uh, call 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana and if you're fucking anywhere call 1-800-GET-WITH-IT but if you don't have no problems then you shouldn't have no problems because I'm only doing $25 a fucking game two three nights a week just to watch the games they're on fucking TNT just to entertain yourself so again download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today pressing code Joey I'm gonna make your fucking world this weekend the joint is also brought to you by my favorite CBD Lion. Fucking tremendous. Do me a favor. Go to the CBD Lion website and read the third-party lab results. Learn of what the fuck is going on with you. Do you have anxiety? Do you have pain? What do you have? CBD Lion will help you. Read. Read up on CBD, CBN, CBY, and which products could help you, whether it's the roller whether it's the cream, whether it's the tape, they've got pills, they've got, you could smoke it. Look at this. Dra look, fucking CBD line gives it to you every other single way. Right now, you got knee pain, ankle pain. Get the fucking cream, get the tape. Go to CBD line right now and press in Joey or Church and get 10% off. I think it's 20. Who the fuck knows? Take a chance, Columbus did. And fucking get 20% off your order delivered right to your house, CBD. You don't have to buy it from some fucking GED fucking recipient at a gas station. And that's it, and that's that. joint is here motherfuckers it's a beautiful day to be alive it's been a couple great weeks uh you know i had a great fucking weekend i told you guys on monday i went to an acdc tribute band fucking tremendous uh live music for the first time in 15 months it was great to fucking see uh 
on the day. It was ACDC Bon Scott. On the way out, my daughter looks at me. She's like, what? No back in black? I almost fucking died. I go, <laughs> no, nah, no no back in black. Don't worry about it, darling. <laughs> Saturday, Sunday, we swam. Monday, you got the fucking podcast. And there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we got a weed brand. We got Uncle Joey releasing his own fucking weed brand July 16th. I will keep you guys posted through the ice cream cake shop in uh, Studio Motherfucking City. Uh, we got an offer on the fucking book, so that'll be coming to shelves soon. We're still writing. We're still on chapter fucking seven. Don't don't get all excited. Seven, seven yeah, Damn. on chapter seven. So we're fucking hustling. Dude. We hustle, you know. But it's hey, listen, this is a long fucking saga. <laughs> Look at me and Ryan Sickler. We've been at it for a year. We're only up to nineteen eighty seven or yeah, some right. shit like this. So sure. <laughs> relax. I got a lot of good things. NFTs are coming mid month. The cups are running late for my Patreon. Beautiful people. The NFTs will be on fucking point for my Patreon, beautiful people, and everything is great. I had a little fucking uh, breakthrough this week, which we will talk about on fucking Monday. Um, I had to practice what I preach. I did smoke a little reefer. I've been smoking a little reefer at night, loading up the pipe, going outside and smoking. No more smoking in the house. I made a rule, but I get my little pipe and I go outside and I take two fucking hits. I'm smoking that 35%. Am I getting as high as I want? I told you. It's going to take another fucking month, another month or two. But I will be ready to smoke with you live July 16th when my two fucking herbs get released and then we'll all be fucking partying. But, yeah, I did fucking get high last week and it was pretty fucking good. I still gave the edibles a week. I went back on the tea, but I just took put two bags in there now. Uh... I'm feeling better. I keep fucking losing weight. I'm working out like a lunatic. I'm getting vitamin D. I'm doing all the things you got to be doing. I'm spending time with my fucking family. I don't miss LA. I'm happy here in Jersey. It's been fucking great. Great couple of weeks. You guys could see it. You guys have seen the growth on the podcast. This is not a podcast that you've seen grown, that we've added stuff or whatever. With this podcast, I hope you're learning that you watched me make a huge adjustment. I was a mess when I got off that fucking plane, and today I'm still not up to 100%. I'm still not doing stand-up, but at least we're making plans. At least we're writing. We're doing different things. It was funny this weekend. I did something that I never thought I'd do. I made up with a brother of mine that I haven't spoke to in uh, 12 years. 12 years ago, we got into a slight argument over something stupid, and uh, I was hard-headed, and I said, fuck it, I'm never going to talk to that cocksucker again. But he was the reason why I moved down here because I used to come down here and visit him. Saturday night, my wife went to a fucking concert, uh, a Leonard Skinner tribute, and I had the baby, and I dropped her off at my friend's house to go swimming with their kids, and I had to take a ride. I had to go to CVS, and I ended up by the house. So I drove past the house, and I uh, saw that he still lived there. The house was gorgeous. And then I called my sister that night and I asked him if she had heard from him. And she goes, you know, he calls from time to time and he cries. He, you know, you're his brother. You're the only, his other two brothers died and I'm the only one that's left. And his mother died. So, you know me, dog. I'm a hard-headed fuck. When I get pissed off at you, I get pissed off at you. But uh, I had to practice what I preach on here and I had to make somebody's day, you know. So I went over there with my daughter. Uh... He hugged me, he cried, he broke down. We both cried and broke down. His name is Chrissy Fish, so he made me some fucking lobsters. He made me some fucking shrimp. Uh, I dropped off some edibles from him yesterday. I'm going to start delivering fish with him once a week to help him out because he's getting old, and I like it. You know, you got to be in the fucking Hunts, Hunts Point Market at 3.30 in the fucking morning arguing with fucking Italians and, and the Japanese people trying to buy sushi. It's a fucking blast. When he had the business out of the foot market, I used to go over there with him and deliver. We, we're done by one. We stop at a few restaurants, a few supermarkets, and we're done by fucking one o'clock. We're back down here, and he'll drop me off. And uh, I think he's going to give me a couple yardsticks a day. I don't even give a fuck. It's just something to do, and I get to help him out. He's 64. He has a hard time carrying shit, and uh, that's it. It felt good, man. It felt really good to go over there. And talk to him. It's fucked up when we have a brother or somebody close to us that we stop talking to over something stupid. 
You know, it was something stupid. It was the, uh, it was a, a ticket or something like that. You know, he got a ticket with my car or something, and, and, and he, I don't know what the fuck happened. But sometimes you just got to fucking swallow your pride and be a man and go over there. And I did it, and I feel a lot better for it, and that's it, and that's that. This weekend we have a guest. He's a great fucking guy. I've known him for 20 years, fucking solid New Yorker. Makes me laugh at my ass off. I'd like to welcome you, Mr. Robert Kelly. Enjoy, cocksuckers. It's my brother, Robert Kelly, looking good like a motherfucker. How you doing, pal? Good. What's the matter? You look depressed all of a sudden. Like yeah, no, I look... Stole I, your protein I'm fucking... Shake. Uh, I'm good. I just got back from the gym. I'm a little... Getting my shit together. That's nice. A nice cigar after the fucking gym. You just work the lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Look at you. Like a fucking old school Cuban. Look at you. All you need is a wig and you could be a Cuban grandmother. You got to see those Cuban grandmothers light those fucking cigars. They don't give a fuck. The cigar outweighs them. <laughs> <laughs> Any yes. good? What type of cigar is that? Any good? Well, this is my favorite cigar on the planet Earth. Hoyo. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a limited edition 2013, the Epicure, Grand Epicure, Cuban. From what, Dominicans or Cubans? Cuban. Okay. This nice. was uh, Russell Peters, fucking sweetest guy in the world. Best dude ever. I mean, I went to his house and he handed me a box of my favorite cigars. Fucking crazy. Who the fuck does that? Well, he's that's why he's who he is, because uh, he's his fucking great as a guy as can be you know that yeah he's as great as can yeah, i be. mean he's he's fucking i mean dude that shit right there i'll 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 die for you yeah <laughs> no that's I'll that's die. why people are the way they are with him he called me for a favor a couple months ago done you know because i know that he's that type of motherfucker he'll just come through for you how are you rob kelly I'm doing good, buddy. It's good to see you. It's been a long fucking time. I'm an old man now. I haven't seen you in 20 fucking years. It's been a long fucking time. Since dude. Houston, our Houston days with Pete. Remember? Down. Do you remember fucking, do you know, I just saw him uh, a year and a half ago. He came to one of my shows and we hung out. He loved you. He loved me Fuck. and you. That we We ran that club, you and me. The, the locals <laughs> used to get pissed. They were like, fucking these Yankees headline. And we would go dude. down there and destroy that fucking room. Dude, that, that room, the Houston, the laugh stop. The laugh stop. He, he ran it. I mean, he was a fucking nutcase, too. I loved him. Oh, my God. He would drink those Jaegers. He would do a bottle of Jaeger a night we were doing over there. A bottle of fucking Jaeger we were doing. Yeah, there was always that moment where you're fucking, fucking with him. But where he looks at you and that fucking scar in his, you're like, ah, oh, shit. He's about to fucking, he's about to cut my head off with something. Dog, but, uh, he would get fucked up with us. Those yeah, were some was, old school. That club was, uh, they never had another club like that. That, no. do you remember the open mics on Monday? They went till two in the morning and there'd be 300 people in there on a Monday night. I, yeah, I remember I would go to that club. I would stay extra days. Me too. Yeah, you stayed. And I would we would we would hook up the Xbox at like two thirty in the morning in the main room. We'd hook up the Xbox and play Call of Duty until like five. And I mean I I remember the fucking chicks were outrageous. Outrageous. I mean, outrageous. The, the girls that would come down to see the shows. Texas girls are different, man. They're they're very sweet, nice. They're down to, to down to get funky, and they like to eat, which I liked. They'd always be like, "Let's go get some food," and at like fucking three in the morning, you'd be eating like some chicken fried steak with eggs somewhere. The first time I played that club, I was a feature for Bobby Slayton. Ah, that's funny. I got in on a Wednesday night. I was fucking. I needed a line of coke, like you wouldn't fucking believe. And I didn't know nobody in Houston. And I'm sitting at the bar thinking about fucking, I'm going to have to get one of the dog guys to drive me to the hood and get some coke. And I see this beautiful girl. And she comes over to me and she goes, are you the comedian? Yes. And 
she's like, I'm, are you Cuban? We started talking. She's Cuban. She's Colombian. I go, listen, I don't mean to insult you. Can you get a package? And she goes, yeah, my brother, what do you need? And she goes, I'm with my date, but I'll drop him off and get you a package and bring it back. I thought she was bullshitting me. She showed up at the fucking room. Remember the old hotel they had that before the hotel got washed out? Houston, the best thing about the lap stop was they had a hotel that they put you at. And Willie Nelson had stayed there. Fucking every great country performer, every Jimi Hendrix had been there. Yeah. It was just that type of hotel. The doors didn't lock. All right. you had to do was go back to that hotel, grab a beer, and go out into the patio. And within five minutes, somebody would come to you, whether it was five in the morning <laughs> or four in the morning. There was always some lonely person in that hotel. And next thing you know, you were in that room snorting coke, <laughs> eating ass, fucking drinking, smoking pot. It was fucking tremendous. What a! I missed that club when it closed. Big. Time. I was there. I I went there and I middled for Dane when Dane was doing clubs. And I remember at the end of the weekend, he walked up to me. He's like, "Fuck, I, fuck him. I want you. I want you fucking back." And I was like, "Well, I, all right." He goes. You're a fucking headline here. I'm going to bring you back three times a year. You're going to fucking build up a fan base, and you'll fucking sell this place out. And that's exactly what he did. He built a fan. That's what clubs, some clubs suck because they won't give you the shot to build a fan base. He would bring me back three times a year, and I would just murder every time. And he built this fan base up around me, and then they just started coming. So when I first went, it was good. Second time, it was great. The third time, fourth time, it was just fucking sold out, lying out the door, and he built that around me as like one of his his guys. But it's I never crazy, stayed in that hotel. I made him put. I like. I'm a boutique guy. I like a boutique hotel. I like a little boutiquey downtown. You know what I mean? Weird fucking bed, a fucking huge pillow with some weird shit on it. You know, maybe a kooky chair. He used to so. put us up at the Intercontinental for a while after that hotel went down. Because that hotel died in a flood. Right. So then he would put you up at the Intercontinental Hotel. And one night, Felipe went down there. And <laughs> when Felipe was fucking crazy, like 2004, 2005, Felipe went down there and had a party in his room and they lit the curtains on fucking fire and shit. <laughs> and fucking, I get a call from Pete on Monday, like, Joey, what the fuck is going on with this kid? He lit the curtains on fire. You know, it was it was a tremendous fucking story. And I heard that he was up all night, and he went to the open mic and just leveled the fucking open mic. Pete was like, boy, he was fucked up, but he went up there, and the drugs went away. He just leveled that fucking room. It was such a great room, man. Yeah. It was it a was great so room. I got to actually, I think it's, I got the audio somewhere. I snapped one of my, you know, I I don't snap too much on Snape, but I fucking snapped a couple times. The audio is on the internet somewhere, but I was in there. I did my first album, my first Robert Kelly Live, my first CD. I did at that club. Pete, Pete was like, "Fuck it," because nobody would give me a shot. He's like, "Just fucking do it here." He put the CD recorder in there for me, so that I could do my album. He went and pay, paid the fucking money, had him hook it up. And hooked Mike the crowd. And I think it was the last night, this little cocksucker in the front row, just fucking arms crossed. Like, it's almost like he came to let me know, fuck, I don't like you. The whole show. And I lost my fuck. I got so mad and snapped so bad that other couples were leaving. Like, they were like, fuck this, I'm out. And I was like screaming, I respect you. At least you got up and left because you're a fucking man. This spineless cocksucker. Just sitting there, and it's on on one. It's on the audio for uh, at the lab stop. It was fucking great. Rogan taped the CD there, and then he released it there. He had a release party. What? That's great. And the night of the release party, I hid in the back room, and while he was on stage, I came out behind him naked, <laughs> and he kept talking. He didn't know I was naked. I was naked with the cape open, like the. I came out like that. And some chick fucking taped it. She still has it. It was online for a while. Rogan uh, turns around. I started chasing him with my dick out. It was fucking tremendous. The crowd went nuts. I still remember looking to the back 
and people in the back were standing on their chairs just <laughs> fucking clapping. It's amazing what happens when you take your clothes off on a stage. Yeah. People go fucking nuts. Yeah, now if I took my, I, I wouldn't be able to pull that stunt. Oh, no, no, no. I need a fucker. My, my nutsacks are down to my fucking knees. I take my nuts out now. They call 911, and, and next thing you know, Black Lives Matter shows up. I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Joey, I pissed, I, I pissed the other day on my nuts. That's how big my nuts are. I sat down to pee because I was too old. I can't stand to pee all the time. I got to sit down in the morning and just fucking kind of tuck everything in and lean over a little bit, make sure it's not going through the, the seat and the bowl. And I actually pissed on my nuts. That's how big my balls are now. Well, let me tell you something. When I did the knee surgery, the redo, I went to take a shit one night and I sat down and I actually, when I went to sit down, I picked up the, my ass stuck to the toilet seat and my ball sack went under the toilet seat and I sat on my ball sack with the knee surgery. You have no idea the confusion I had. You don't know what to do. Get up, sit down. My dick looked like, my balls looked like a waffle for like three fucking days. They were flat with the little edges in it and shit. I had blood in them. You know, I didn't piss any blood, so I'm all right. But my nuts are fucking 100% balls of steel. So that's the only reason why I didn't fucking bleed. But we're getting that old that you got to watch. I pee standing up. I don't even put my dick in the toilet, Rob Kelly. Since I'm a kid, I think it's disgusting. I want women to suck my dick and not have bad breath afterwards. So... I never put my dick where another man's dick is. I don't want that shit. That's fucking. I, I pee in my house sitting down. I have to sit there. In the morning, the first piss, I can't stand up. No, I, 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 I think, always piss. I, I'm so fat, Joey, that my dick, I want to lose weight just to see my dick again. Because my, 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 the bigger you get, the smaller your dick gets. You know what I mean? I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. But when I was 418, I was still slinging dick. My dick was still big and shit. It was just, when I did coke, then it would shrivel up like a fucking, you know. When I did the knee surgery, they put so many drugs in me that my dick shrunk all the way in. I couldn't even get the helmet out. I had to pee in a container, and I couldn't get the helmet out. And a nurse was holding the container for me. And I'm making eye contact with her because I don't want her to look down on my dick and then go, I saw Joey Diaz. And all that came out was just a little pink helmet, like a dog. There was no meat to it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't need that shit nice, in my though, life. Back in the day, man, I used to have a nice. I remember I used to have a nice piece. I'd have to put it on one side or the other before I went out at night. And now it's a fire. It's just a nightmare. It it's is. A, and I'm uncircumcised. You got to see what my dick looks like now. It got dark over the years. I used to have a cat in my backyard that was a Siamese, but he had black balls and a black dick. His balls would hang. They were just black. And that's me now. I'm white. My balls are like that regular off-skin color. You got the rashes, the scratches. <laughs> you got a birthmark. And then my dick with the uncircumcision, it's just dark. It's just like a black dick that's just dark. <sighs> and it just sits there with the little uncircumcised little Jew helmet on. And that's my dick now. It's like three inches, and that's. I'm sorry, I'm talking about my dick, but if that's what it is, that's what it is on a Wednesday morning, cocksuckers. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Get old, motherfucker, man. People have no idea, and that's why I say, you know, you got to prepare for this shit. Once you start preparing for it, it makes life a lot easier. I read that if you're over fifty, the fountain of youth is lifting fucking weights. I was kickboxing. I was doing jujitsu. I quit everything. I just lift weights now. That's the fountain of youth that keeps my diabetes down. I don't have diabetes, but I'm just saying that yeah. it keeps your cortisol levels down, all that shit. I sleep more, so I'm in that gym four fucking days a week. I got no, no I, options. I just started going back. I, all I do is I do 20 minutes on the pre-core, and then I, I lift weights. That's all I do. Cause, and that's all I can do. I can't do any of that. I, had a, I got a trainer last year. He fucking hurt me. Two two sessions in, I pulled my uh, calf muscle because he's trying to get me to like. I'm not an MMA MMA fighter. I'm not doing ropes and fucking uh, mountain climbers. You're out of your fucking mind. I'm done. I go Wait. in, I walk, I do the weights, and then I leave. I'm out. What do you do for weights? Bench, bent I, over. I, I do the I do the chest. I do the shoulders. I do the tries. I do the buys. I do the back, and I do the legs. So I try to do two, a pop. So if I'm going in, I'll do shoulders and I'll do, uh, you know, like buys or something like that. And then I'll do chest and back 
and then I'll do tries and legs. And I usually go, I go, I got a gym. It's called Anytime Fitness. It's like really right down the street from my house. It's open 24 hours a day. I go at 12 at night. I go at, when I'm up, usually I'm up watching TV, fucking everybody's in bed. I'm just fucking sitting there staring at something because I'm, I'm a maniac. I'm used to just being up all night. You know, thinking about fucking life and all that shit. Everybody's sound asleep at 930. Uh, I'm up. So I was like, fuck it. I might as well just go to the gym. I'll watch a dumb TV show or YouTube at the gym. And I'll listen to whatever the fuck I'm going to listen to there and and lift weights. Because th- this is a nightmare. It just sucks before because, you know, look, I'm 50. I got a kid. You know, I'm not doing it to get laid anymore. I'm not doing it to look good. I'm doing it so my fucking kid... You know, uh, you know, does, has a dad in around, you know, 25, 30 years. You know, I had a kid late. You had a kid late, too. I had a kid at 42. You know, so. I had a so, kid at fucking 50. You had a kid at 50? Yeah. That's some powerful jizz That's the right Cuban there. blood. Yeah, that jizz. I'm like Theo Vaughn's dad. I'll knock you up when I'm 74. <laughs> I got that fucking spick fucking cum. That shit. They, they, they jerk you off in the casket to get the last <laughs> bit of that shit. That shit's good. I can, I, I, when I'm dead, they could give me that one last jerk off and I still fucking impregnate three women. All they got to do is take the sperm and throw in that fucking monkey and they're done. Nine months later, you got a Joey Diaz looking like fucking ugly monkey looking <laughs> baby and shit like that. So I yeah, got I, Irish, I got Irish Italian jizz. I'm done. I'm lucky that last, I got that last one that made it up the fucking tube, just staggered into her fucking egg and fell into it. So I'm done. My jizz is done. <laughs> No, I'm very lucky. I'm happy. And I remember going to the doctor. My friends out in L.A., the fucking, the muscle crew was like, Joey, you're over 50. You got to take testosterone. And I started taking it. I started going to a doctor and getting a shot every week. And I ended up in the fucking hospital giving them a gallon of blood because my red blood count had taken over or some shit. And I told my acupuncturist, and she told me right out. She goes, listen, don't do it. It don't work for Cuban people. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because she's Jewish. I go, what are you talking about? It works for everybody. She goes, don't do it. And sure enough, after I came out of the hospital, I went back to the fucking doctor, and I told him what had happened. He's like, Jesus Christ, this only happened one other time to me with a Cuban dude about 20 years ago. What so the my, fuck is that? I don't know. So my acupuncturist was right. She was like, you don't need it. You, you don't need to make testosterone. You knocked your wife up at 50. That's your fucking testosterone. What do you need to make testosterone get a shot for? I'm like, my friends are telling me that I'll be a lot better off. Nothing. I'm better off now. I take a little testosterone pill twice a day. I lift weights. You do your little protein drink at night before you fucking hit the crib with my potassium pills. And I'm done with my magnesium. That's what I've been living off of. Magnesium and probiotics. Yeah, that's what all my friends do. Do you get a stem cells and testosterone? Go get this check. No, I don't want no check. fucking needles. Uh, I'm fucking old school in it. I'm original Superman. I'm going to the gym. I'll take a protein shake. I'll eat a banana. I'll cut down on the carbs and I'll walk. I'm, I'm going to fucking, I ain't doing any of that shit. I ain't growing my hair back. I'm not getting fucking plugs. I'm done. I shaved my head at 32. I was like, I'm out. I'm out. Good for you. How's the comedy going? What are you thinking so far? <clears throat> I don't know, dude. It's a weird. Listen, you know, you know, we've been. It's hard to get these engines back up. You know, I I did it for twenty eight years, nonstop, pretty much every Friday and Saturday night, pretty much every night of the week, except for maybe Sundays. But even Sundays for most of that twenty eight years, and then to shut it down for a year. And be home on Fridays and Saturdays and to kind of get used to that shit. Because now I got a life. Back in the day, I had no life. It was just me in some shitty apartment in New York City. Now I got this backyard. I got my kid who I fucking love. He's got baseball. I got my wife. We have dinner. We barbecue. You know, all this shit. So now to get up at four in the morning, get in the car go to the airport, check in, get on a fucking plane, go to the fucking thing, open that up. You know what I mean? Get, get to the hotel, all that shit. It's, it's like, fuck man, getting those engines up and then getting to the club, doing the show, two shows fucking kill me. Ooh, 
Two shows kill me, dude. You got to work yourself up to that now. You got to do like a show and a guest set for like a month. <laughs> a show and then do a guest set on the second show. I, You know, Bob, I tried and it just wasn't working for me. I yeah. tried for about six or seven weeks. I took uh, I took off from March 2nd, like everybody yeah. else, till August. I got on stage with our man Rich Voss and Florentine at the East Hanover Mall where you just performed that. Mm-hmm. I felt good that night. The only thing I was scared of, that a bear was going to come and drag me out from the fucking thing into the woods. <laughs> That's the only fear I had. I did good. And then I started doing spots at Uncle Vinny's great club. I love Dino. Yeah. But Love I just him. wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. I couldn't write new material, and I hate doing fucking old jokes, you know? So I said, yeah. you know what, Dino, let me pull the plug. Let me get my heart and my soul and my head connected, Yeah. and I'll come back when I'm fucking ready, you know? And I'm I hoping. I feel you, dude. I feel you. Yeah. It's the, it's the new, it's the new, like, back in the day, back a couple of years ago, I would, something would happen, this would go down, I'd hold it. I'd wait till the weekday. I'd go to the cellar. I'd work it, work it, work it. And then by the end of the week, I'd have a new bit. And I'd be good to go. And it was like that thing was flowing. Now, I'm trying to come up with shit, but it's not. There's something missing. Like, I, like I lost something. Like, I can't. I don't know what the fuck it is. But he, even on stage, I'd be like, yeah, and I'll start bringing something up. And it will just go. It's like, just dies. And I wind up having to go back to a bit that I know works. And then your comic guilt sets in where you're like, fuck, man. And then you see these young bucks coming up behind you that are just, you know, hungry little fucking lions that are, you know. And, you know, I, I, I think I got to push through it. I think, I think what I'm going to do is try to get a night where I can go down. Like Ari, Aries is doing Ari, uh, Shafir is doing it. Well, he's got a night at the stand where it's like, look, this is going to suck. So fuck you. I'm just going to do new stuff. And everybody else who's coming up is fucking off. And this isn't, a, this is just going to suck until it doesn't suck. This, you know what I mean? Because something went out, like the pilot light went out with the new stuff. And it's, it's, it's killing me. Because you go on the road and you feel like shit. Because you know, you know when you look out and that guy knows that you, I heard that joke before. You know what I mean? You're like, fuck. It's it's hard. And now it's, very hard. it's too because everybody's doing the, the fucking COVID shit too. So we got to get out of that era, you know? And the whole world changed too. Don't forget that. There's certain things you, you know, you know, you, you, in your head, whether, look, I don't give a fuck. I don't got a B plan. I'm going to do what I want, say what I want. And if I think it's funny, I'm going to do it. But in the back of your head, that is there like, what the fuck, you know? They yeah. can't. They can't listen uh, unless you got a TV show, or they can't take nothing from you. They can take your sponsors from you and a TV fucking show. Right. They can't take what you the time you've put in, and they can't take the microphone from you. And if you're right. selling tickets, these club owners they'll either scab off an Iranian's head. You know that they'll fucking book <laughs> you. They don't give a fuck as long as you pack the fucking room. Right. And go up there and give them one hundred fifty percent. You'll always be a great comic and always have work. People got to get this cancel culture out of their fucking minds. You know what? I'm going straight ahead whether you cancel me or not. I don't give a fuck. Right? Yeah. I kidnapped no, the right. dude and put him in a fucking trunk of a car. You think I'm worried about cancel culture, <laughs> bitch? You could suck my fucking dick now at this age. I've done it all. You want to come at me now? Because 23 years ago, some girl sucked my dick at the comedy store, who I'm dear friends with again now? You want right. to come at me over something like that and try to cancel? Listen, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know, you got no. You, the reason why cancel life exists is because people let themselves get canceled. I'll yeah. fucking go out there. You, you see what happened in Israel and, and fucking Palestine? They're out there throwing rocks. That's me on the stage. I'll be out there throwing fucking rocks. You're not canceling me. Are you I'll, Israel or are you Palestine? I'm nobody. You know me. I got no fight in the dog. Why get why get political <laughs> on the just, podcast? Just, you know I'm me. Joking. You said I you run, were throwing rocks. No, I run I with the just, Jews <laughs> since fucking day one. I'm uncircumcised. I'm potential. So I'm holding out for the best offer from the best temple. You know me, dog. I'm like the number one draft choice of the Jews. They're just holding out to see who, who wants it, to give it, me the cup. It is a weird thing, though, because the people that are coming back, 
I've noticed this because I've been in the city a little bit. The, the, the my age people, the, the people who own houses, the people who own a fridge, aren't the ones coming back out yet. They're staying home. The young motherfuckers are coming out. And there you have to kind of shake them the fuck out of the wokeness because you'll see a joke and they'll be like, oh, my God. And it's like, it's a fucking joke. Not, you know, loosen the fuck up. And once you lose, once you shake them out of it, they can. OK, I get it. You know what I mean? All right. I get it. But they're so used to just fucking jokes that they don't have to think about that. It doesn't have to. There's no emotion attached to it. It's just a laugh or, or an applause. Like, oh, that was smart. I ain't into that. I, I just I get it. I'm cool with it. It's just not my thing. I, I like when somebody's mad at me on stage. Me too. You know what I mean? That's the point. I like, when I, I like when I see some dude having a check with his fucking girl every couple seconds because she's pissed off because she hates me. I love when you know a motherfucker I mean? squirms in his desk over a fucking joke. I love it. Yeah. I love it that you're this fucking weak that you got to squirm over a fucking joke. That's the first thing your mother told, told you. You know what I'm saying? Sticks and stones won't break my bones. Words will never hurt me. What the fuck are you worried about? Why are you jiggling in your... Because I said I eat her asshole? Go fuck yourself. You know, and then they throw the religious card at you. You All you religious motherfuckers could suck my dick. You'd all be pedophiles if they let you. So fuck yeah, you too. It's not even that. Religious people have better senses of humor... Yes, they do. ...now than fucking... Dude, 30 years ago, the religious people were the ones, you know, no rock and roll, dirty jokes... I, the, the religious ones have fucking great senses of humor now. It's the it's the woke the ones without the religion that don't believe in God, that you know that believe in fucking uh, all this woke horse shit. And the news is their god. You know CNN and fucking whatever is their god. That's what they believe. They're the ones who suck and uh, and uh, having a problem understanding that these are fucking jokes, and it's 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 not you know that's our job. To say something fucked up. But I also like, I like when somebody doesn't like me, Joey, I like fucking turning them. I like getting them. You know what I mean? I like, that's why I love comedy. We do. Yeah. I love it too. I love the fact that I'm like, okay, you fucking hate me right now, but I'm going to get you. I'm going to fucking call you out. I'm going to let you know that I know what the fuck you know, and I'm going to keep going. And then I'm going to make you giggle and I'm going to go, I got you. Fuck you. You laughed at my shit. You got it now. I saved you. I'm your. I saved you, sweetie. You're healed. You're now That's you can, the interesting that, one. Those are the ones that are great. Those are the ones know? that are really great. And they even tell you after the show. I don't. I don't. I don't like dirty material. But you fucking were funny, or they'll talk to you. I'm the same way. I. I can't. I'll tell you what. I have. I just bumped into a friend of mine. I didn't talk to for eleven years. We pulled up to his house. He was in front of the house. I told my wife before I even opened the door, I go, I guarantee he calls me a spick. As soon as he sees me, he's going to go, what's going on, spick? Not two words after I got out of the car. He hugged me. He had tears in his eyes, and he's like, you spick motherfucker, I missed you. I go, what did I tell you? I've been called a spick by these North Bergen kids since I moved to North Bergen, so it does not bother me at all. It, it gives me a sense of that they love me. They're cool. I got like six of them that still call me a spick. The main one died, and I really missed him. Like after he died, I really <laughs> missed him because he would call me, insult me, and then call me a spick. And, you know, what are you, polishing your merengue shoes? And, you know, he would do all that shit. But he didn't know that I laughed at that. Right. So because I'm so open to racism towards bad, like I laugh, you know. Yeah, I'm very free up on stage with what I say also. So I'm, right. I'm a little worried about that, but it's not what you say in comedy. It's how you say it. Yeah. You know, uh, if you say something with a smile on your face, it doesn't hit as much as, you know, I could say fuck you 10 million different ways. Yeah. I mean, I could, that, I, that's the my favorite part about comedy is that I walk on stage and I'm like, what's wrong with your face? And they laugh. It's like, you. I mean... I mean, I'll, I'll be in the middle of my shit and I'll just be like, I fucking hate your shirt. I just hate it. And his wife will fucking start laughing because she hates it. Just the fact that it's the only thing where you can acknowledge the absolute truth in the moment. You can say whatever the fuck 
you want. And if it's true, a lot of the times it's funny. They'll laugh. You know what I mean? If you just walked up to that guy in a Applebee's and I want to hate your fucking shirt, he'd probably want to fight me. He'd probably want to. And his wife would be pissed off. Like, what the fuck? I bought him that shirt. You know what I mean? But in a comedy club setting, if you got them, you can say whatever the fuck you want. You know what I mean? If they get you and they understand what you, your, your tempo, you can say whatever the fuck you want. That you know? room we were talking about, the Houston Lifestyle. Yeah. I could say whatever the fuck I wanted to in that room. Right. I got away with more shit than anybody in that room. There yeah. was only one word you could not say in that room that would bring that audience to a halt. And I saw it happen. Thank God I'm not political. You could not bring up Bush there. Why? If you said something about Bush at the Houston oh, Lab Stop, it's like you call their mother a fucking cunt. Yeah. They would freeze. But if you said something about Bush in Austin, they right. would jump up and down. Right. So you could see the differences. But that was the only freedom that Houston took from you as a comic. Yeah. Just don't talk about Bush. He's our boy, dog. Everything you know, it's else, so, it's transvestites, so funny. fucking, uh, remember they used to have the gay neighborhood? Because that club was in a gay yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, when uh -huh. they had great food, they, they fucking great food. The pizza was good, the Ch Anthony Chang's Dumpling Palace. Yeah. Fucking, they had a gay restaurant where they used to have meatloaf. And I would go in there every day and I would go, you know what? I know there's cum in this meatloaf. That's how they kept it together. <laughs> but I don't give a fuck. If they DNA me right now, I got eight different sperms. <laughs> From eight different, like when I took the 23 and me, I knew that that <laughs> Indian blood I had was from fucking eating that meatloaf at that place in Houston. It was so good. It, it fucking wouldn't break. It was, kept, I'm telling you, the sperm was the crazy glue in that fucking thing. So <laughs> it was a binder. <laughs> yeah, it kept it together. It was like the breadcrumbs. You know what's so funny, though? What sucks about comedy now, there's two things that it's, it's like, I don't know how I became a fucking political pundit. I, I don't give a fuck. And I don't want you to know what is up here. And I don't want you to know who I like, who I vote, what religion, all that shit. If I choose to tell you, I tell you, I, you don't need to know every fucking thing about me. And I don't need to fucking sit here. I feel like you have to stand on some, you have to pick some side. You have to let people know where you stand on this, on that, on every fucking thing. Buddy, I, I, I don't do that. I tell you, if something happens to me, I bring it on stage. I think it's funny. It's fucking funny. I, I don't know why all of a sudden I became the news for you. And if I don't fucking, you know, let me tell you about this. And that's when she said that, it's wrong. I don't like the news. I don't fucking watch news. I've hated news was a punishment for me. When my grandfather used to punish me, he'd make me watch news. And I would sit there. And these assholes in suits would be talking to other assholes in suits. And they've been arguing since we started this fucking world. I don't fucking need to deal with that shit. I want to laugh, have a good fucking time, and then go get some food and not fucking die. And maybe some sex every six months for my wife. Right? But, you know, all this shit that we got to... And, and here's another thing, too. I always thought we were like the mob. I thought comics, we were like the mafia. You know what I mean? We are sure we don't like them. She doesn't like me. Fuck her. Fuck him. But when it came down to it, we, we had each together. other's backs. Yeah, no, that's not the case. We had each other's backs. And now I feel like one person ratted and now everybody fucking rats. Yeah, no, that's that. I knew when the Rogan Mencia thing went down that we were in a mafia and it broke my heart for a while. That's why I stopped going to the store. That was why I stopped going to the store because the deal was they banned Rogan and the comics were supposed to meet outside and do a protest. And that night, Mitzi found out about it and said, whoever does it is getting banned from the store. And the comics said, fuck Rogan. And I go, well, I won't go down there no more because they don't have my back. Right? Why would I want to be with people that don't have my back? So it really hurt me for a while. What did then, you guys go, though? Where did, I mean, where did you guys do comedy after that? I just, uh, at that time, I would just open up for Joe. He was doing a lot of road work. We did improvs. Uh, when I moved to the Valley, I started working out a lot at the Ha Ha. 
she was very good to me. The Agostino, the manager, was very good to me. And then one day Tommy left, and Adam, the new booker, called me, and he goes, I'd love to get you back in here. And I went back yeah. down, and that had to be 2014. That was the week of my colonoscopy. I'll never forget it. I did a colonoscopy, and I they called on a Friday. And I said, let me think about it. You know, Mitzi was still alive, so I, I still had tons of love for them. Yeah. And I said to myself Saturday, I go, nope, I'm not fucking going back there. Fuck them. But that Sunday night when I was in a colonoscopy, I couldn't sleep because you keep shitting all night from that fucking vitamin juice they give you. You're shitting yeah. chicken bones, the bubble gum you ate when you're four. Everything comes out of your ass that you've eaten. Have you had a colonoscopy? Yeah. Yeah, so... I fucking was sitting there and a movie came out called Being There with uh, Pink the Pink Panther. The guy that plays the original Pink Panther. Peter, Peter, Peter Sellers? Sellers has a movie called Being There that is in my top five movies. And top the, five? Oh, it is brilliant. It is top one of the five. most top five. One of the most brilliant movies you ever see in your life. When the movie ends, if you're not touched, you need to hang yourself. Because it's that beautiful of a fucking movie. I forget the lady's name that's the star of that movie with him. She's, she's fucking tremendous. But it's a movie that's about God, to be honest. It's about God. Yeah. And a friend of mine, that was her favorite movie. And she passed from cancer. And she was a regular at the store. And she's the one, before she died, to tell me to stop doing blow. And I listened to her and I stopped and I was clean. So that movie to me was like a sign. It's time for you to go back to the store. So I did the colonoscopy Monday morning, and I was at the store Tuesday night with a rotten asshole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so. I, I, actually, limp. I love my colonoscopy. Me too. I love getting all that shit out of there. I'm going and then back the next day, that next Michael Jackson months. juice. I mean, because I, I'm sober 35 years. I haven't touched anything since I was 15. Not a drink or a drug. So to, to go in and get a colonoscopy and, and you know, kind of get a free pass, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean the little cocktail? Dude, when they, they gave me that Michael Jackson shit, woo, I woke up. <sighs> I was like, wow, wow. It's fucking great. Don't the they gave sucked, it to me for the knee doctor, surgery. My doctor had smoking hot chicks, these Spanish girls. You know, I thought I was going to go in and fucking have some old wretchedy nurse I didn't care if I was naked. I walked in. My doctor has two smoking hot nurses that are assisting on this. And my, I mean, dude, my, my asshole, ugh, you know, maybe when I was younger, I had a nice asshole. Now it's just fucking terrible. Oh. My dick. I knew my dick. I was trying to fluff up before I went in just to have a, at least a little piece. I mean, it was a fucking nightmare. Nightmare. That's the only thing that bummed me out. Is the two hot nerves, but everything else was fantastic. That's terrible when you have a female helping you with something and you have an embarrassment. Like, I take this testosterone pill, but it makes your pee smell like fucking debt. <laughs> like, when I'm on it for 30 days, it makes my pee smell horrible. And I'm doing the Soprano movie yeah. in September in New York. And I got to keep pissing, but I'm so nervous from the fucking COVID. And the people are yelling at you to put your mask on, to stay away, six feet. And I went to piss at one time, and my piss was like splattered from my heart beating. I guess my PSA numbers were high that day. And when I put my dick back in my shorts, like oh. another ounce of piss came out. So my I could smell the pee all day when I was sitting there talking to Ray Liotta. I could smell the pee from my fucking own dick ah. in my nose. So at the end of the day, I told the wardrobe girl, go, come here, because she was a good lady. I put a 50 in her hand. They go, listen, don't smell the pants. Wash them. Don't smell them. Don't smell the shirt. The bottom of the shirt's got that horse piss on it. It was fucking horrible. But... <laughs> I remember one time I went to the doctor's office. I was 400 pounds, Robert Kelly. And they put you on a thing to do the EKG. And it was a small office. And the doctor goes, all right, get up. And the doctor put his hand out. And when I went to get up, I blew a tremendous fart. I'm talking world-class, noise, length, 
that last ta 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 when it gives you that last backfire from your asshole. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Everybody just looked at it. The chick was hotter than fuck. And everybody just stared at each other in the doctor's office. And I immediately got up and got in front of the door so nobody could get out. And I blocked their fucking way. And they're both looking at me, making believe they can't smell this death. And it's pure death. It smelled like Piscataway, New Jersey. It was fucking, it was fucking horrible. Do you understand me? Yeah. There's nothing worse than hot chicks. In the doctor's office. When I was younger, I remember when I was younger, I used, I mean, I was shredded. I was fucking, I mean, gorgeous. I, I, I mean, I, I'll fuck, I went to the hospital a couple of times and I got, I was like, yeah, I'll fucking take my clothes off. I used to get naked like Brad Pitt. I, and I actually had a couple, a couple nurses comment on like my body. It was weird. But uh, now it's, a, I went into, I had to get, I had to get a little nugget. You know what I mean? My dick had some war wounds from, from being a piece of shit for a long time, you know. And uh, I had to get my my to make it checked, and it was a, a fucking hot chick comes in. She's like, "Put this over your penis." I'm like, "Ah, oh, god damn it! I'm trying to get it big, you know." And, and then she's like, "She's like, pull it, like stretch it." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, I stretched my dick because <laughs> it wasn't big enough for her." She had to, Stretch my dick out because she had to look at my dick. The doctor comes in. He's fucking, ugh, it was a nightmare. And it, my dick was just frightened. My dick was like, I'm out. I'm gone. I'm just trying to go back in my my body. I, you think, know, you yeah, get, I, I think dicks get scared when they go to the doctor's office. Something, there's something up with dicks because my dick shrinks the fuck up when I go to the doctor's office. Yeah, my, my dick goes only one time when I was, I worked at a Jewish camp. I worked at a Jewish camp as a lifeguard for a summer. Back in the day. And uh, I got a rash. I got baby rash on my thigh. And the nurse or the doctor, whatever, the camp doctor, smoking hot. I mean, fucking ridiculous. And uh, I went in to say, you know, hey, I got rash. And she goes, well, let me see it. And so I, I pulled down my pants and she got down on her knees in the doctor's office to examine my my side of my balls and i just remember my dick shot straight up in the <laughs> and i remember she actually looked up she went up with it like this and i just went i'm sorry she goes it's okay and it made it even harder when she said it's okay and uh she didn't do anything unfortunately i didn't have the balls to make that move, you know what I mean? It was that second where you gotta go, you know, what I mean? she wants she want this, you know? And I just, I pussied out like an asshole. One of the biggest regrets of my life. That's the worst. Well, what doctor gets on her knees? That's like, just give me some cream and tell me to beat it. You don't have to fucking look at it. It's baby rash. I was playing tennis in old underwear. I mean, what are you gonna do? She, let me see it. All right, what do you, she wanted it and I fucking left. He's and you kid. dropped the fucking ball, Bobby Kelly. God yeah, damn now, it. I can't now, take now you anywhere. 60. Yeah, now nobody wants to. Nobody wants to. No, listen, I, I, I've said it for years. Since I turned, I had my daughter, it's, it's been weird. Like, you go on the road and girls say stupid things to you and you, like, giggle and say, yeah, whatever. And, and I'm like, you don't understand. You don't want to see my dick right now. Yeah. I'm 58. This is scarring you. This is PTSD. Yep. This is, you're never going to survive this shit. These young girls that think this is a joke. It's like these young girls that keep pressing charges on Marilyn Manson. What did you expect? You didn't <laughs> think he was going to light your pussy on fire? Listen to his fucking <laughs> lyrics, you fucking asshole. Well, I dated him and he, and he stuck a candle up my ass. You're lucky. You're lucky. I would have put a sailboat up your ass. <laughs> fucking Marilyn Manson. What are you, fucking nuts? You know, you get what you pay for, cocksuckers. What did you think was going to happen? These little cute white girls. Want to date Marilyn Manson? He ties them up. He puts a ball in their mouth, and then they want to fucking if, call the L.A. Times. What are you crazy? The L.A. Girl, Times ain't gonna help you. If a girl likes me, if like, if there's a hot chick that comes up after the show, and she's into me, I know there's something mentally wrong with her. Yes, me too. Yeah. When they there's say stupid like, shit, I'm like, what is she talking about? She's into this. Like she has a thing for dudes with tits. And a, a belly button hernia and dead toenails. You know what I mean? That's her thing. She's into some weird shit. 
Sorry. If I even got a blowjob, I'd have to do it with socks on. Because if you see my fungi toenail, oh, they mine die. Terrible. You put tea tree oil on them? Oh. You Dude, I'm, go to I'm, I did all of it. I'm done. They, you, they're what they are. You got to go know, to my CVS wife, and my put tea tree oil on them. My wife makes me paint them black when we go on vacation. I painted them this weekend because I knew I was going in the pool. I just painted the clear. But they're getting better. It takes a year with the tea tree oil. But at least my feet don't smell like fucking a Lowe's theater no more with the old popcorn. <laughs> I would take <laughs> my shoes off. My fucking fungi toenail is ter- And I would grind it. I'd take the grinder and i grind it. And then i take powder and I would sniff it. And I would ah. put it in like a container like cocaine. And I would throw it at Lee. When we were doing the podcast, tremendous. <laughs> Robert Kelly, where are you at this weekend? Um, I'm at Napanock, New York at the uh, paper mill up in the uh, up, upstate New York in the boondocks. They got this awesome club, this awesome place called the paper mill. And I'm going to be there Saturday night. Okay. Uh, and where are yeah. you at next week? I think next week, Joey, I'm at this gig. I got this gig in Key West. See, that's what I'm doing. I'm booking myself at clubs that I like and uh, and like Key West, Comedy Key West. So I'm going to Comedy Key West the 17th, 18th, and 19th, and I'm staying the 20th, um, which is fucking great. And then I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to fucking Vegas. I'm going to go to the Comedy Works in Vegas. I'm doing all these clubs that I like. Going to Vasani's. You do? Did you do Vasani's yet? No. Where's that? Ah, dude, it's down in Florida, uh, Port Charlotte. They'd fucking you'd murder. Fucking great club. Place packs out. The fucking fans of the shit. So I'm only working places I really like to work. You know, you know, you know when you're working, work, you'll just take a gig and blah blah blah. Right, right. right. I don't want to do that shit. I don't want to put my self esteem out there and be fucked up. So I'm going to work places I really like. This guy who does the nap and knock thing, he does a bunch of stuff in Jersey to a lot of good places. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. But Key West, I've never been to Key West. You know Mike Calta? I know the name. Oh, uh, you'd, you'd love the, the, the DJ, the DJ, right? The radio? Yeah, yes. the radio. He's down in Tampa. Yeah, he, he used to be in you. Chicago, right? No. No, okay, he's the no, Tampa. Mike, yeah, 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 I no, know that, was, that is. Yes, he's a great guy in Tampa. Okay. He's coming yeah. down with me. We're going to vacation together. Okay. I'm yeah, going to take so. my time with stand-up. I'm going to see how I feel in the next month. I assume that I'll be in stage, on stage after the Soprano movie comes out, especially in New Jersey. I'm going to try to get a little residency maybe at the Borgata, one of the small rooms or something, just to stay active. Because of my daughter, I'm not going to do weekends no more. I'm not traveling. There's too yeah. much action here during the week. I got to. And uh, I want to just do maybe Friday nights somewhere, oh. one show. I'm not doing two shows yet. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back into this very slowly. I like my life. I like what I'm doing with the girls. And I've already done 30 years of comedy. I gotta prove nothing to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I just gotta be funny yeah. f- for an hour and uh, get the fuck out of there. I feel the same way, dude. I mean, I, I gotta work. I gotta I gotta do these gigs because. I'm a, look, I'm a club comic. That's how I make my money. That's my job. That's what we do. You know? That's what we do. That's what we do. But I feel you on the kid stuff, man. I'm around my kid as much as I can be around him because I, I fucking love it. I love it. I love I love the evolution of all this shit. You know what I mean? I love that I, I feel like I did it right. I had a, a lot of fun at the beginning of it. I worked my twat off I didn't, you know, for years, but I didn't even know it was work because I loved it. I, it was my, my passion. You know, I was banging comedy. Stand up comedy was my my chick for a long time. Me too. Me and too. now and now it's like I'm good, man. I like being in the backyard. The whole world has changed. My whole thing is different now. I was at my kids' baseball game, had an umbrella, had a big fucking rainbow umbrella. I had my little iced coffee. I'm sitting there screaming, you know, fucking yeah, you know, my kid who's playing baseball. I'm like, this is it. I never thought I'd be this. I'd never thought that, that shit would get me fucking high. But now this is the shit that's getting me high is hanging out with the kid, barbecuing in the backyard, smoking a cigar, throwing a fucking ball to my dog. I mean, I'm, I'm loving life right now. So, Bro, we both have had the same lives because we rocked in the beginning. This was yeah. everything to us. And then God blessed us with a wife and a child. 
and now we have a uh, we have to balance career and family, and it's right. uh, harder than when we were single. You know, when we were single, you don't give a fuck. You get up at two, you get your dick sucked, you get a wart. Who gives a fuck? You know what I'm saying? You, you give it to somebody else. I passed out warts like a motherfucker. They used to call me the wart whisperer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, but Bobby <laughs> Kelly, I love you, cocksucker. Stay in I touch. I love you too, buddy. And thank you very much for doing this. And uh, I'll come up to the house one day and we'll sit in the yard and Yes. We'll talk some shit. I got to yeah, shoot get- a movie this week, so I'll be in your neck of the woods this week. All right, come up. Come up. Hang out. Smoke a bat. How far are you from Astoria? All right, call me. How far are you from Astoria, Queens? Fucking 25, 30 minutes. No, 25 I'll- minutes. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. All right, buddy. Sounds All right. good. I love you, Bye, brother. Buddy. Stay black. Love you too, buddy. Thank Take you. care. All right, you bad motherfuckers. I hope you enjoyed Rob Kelly. He's a great guy. We had some great fucking laughs, a couple giggles. Sorry I talked about my dick. You don't need that in your <laughs> life. It's getting uglier by the day, but at least I'm honest with myself. I'm not over here fucking taking dick pics and putting them on Instagram and sending them to people. There is no dick pics of me. There is ball pictures out. You people could all take a picture of my balls when I did it on the comedy store thing, but there's no dick pics. Nobody gets a dick pic from Uncle Joey. That's 20 of life. No parole. And I advise you not to send dick pics. You understand me? Nothing good could happen from a dick pic. They want to see your dick. They got to see it live like a peep show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look through a fucking hole and see it. I don't give a fuck how they do it. Listen, the joint is brought to you today by CBD Lion. Great fucking CBD. I've been with them for four or five years. They helped me through the surgery. As you can see, I have no tape left. I got to call up Andy and uh, for him to send me some more tape and some more melatonin gummies. You know, listen, if you need CBD in your life, you don't even know if you need CBD in your life. So it all starts by you go, by to go to CBD line and reading. Reading about the symptoms, reading about the cures, reading about the advantages and the disadvantages of CBD, CBN, CBY, and how they could work for you. That's what this is all about. CBD's growing, but there's a lot of fucking fugazis out there. This is not, you know, I'm buying it from some fucking guy at a place that, you know, doesn't know anything about CBD, has never smoked, nothing like this. This is my fucking world. And I'm an old man, so I depend on CBD. So if you're looking for a CBD line that's fucking uh, dependable and great and pure, go to CBDLine.com right now. Press in Joey or Church and get 20% off your order. You understand me? They got great bath balls. They got a great ointment. The gummies, I use them at night to fucking sleep with the melatonin. They got CBD in capsules, like the ABX capsules that get you fucked up. I got a fucking oil. I got, if you want to smoke it, you could smoke the CBD. Guys, CBD Lion, Code Joey. The joint is also brought to you by, listen, this ain't about making fucking millions. This is about entertaining yourself, picking up 50 bucks. If I can make you 200 bucks during a month wouldn't that be helping you out that's why you got to download the app over at DraftKings Sportsbook the best as far as I'm concerned and it's NBA playoffs this is fucking easy this is fucking easy you don't go every night you put $50 down one game no parlays no teases no you you have a hard time walking and chewing bubblegum you want to pick eight fucking teams what are you retarded just go with one team blast that motherfucker or go for the over and under. It's the playoffs. They got to play defense. Like my Uncle Dan says, they got to play defense. So you either go over and under or pick the fucking team, put $50, watch yourself make 97 and you go to bed. At least you got something to do. I don't need for you to become a degenerate. I don't need for you to become a gambling junkie. This is just enter fucking entertainment. It's legal in New Jersey. So why not have a good time? I'm not talking about 500 a game. I would never put $500 on a fucking game. But 25 to watch it. My wife is upstairs. I'm down here jumping up and down with the fucking... Sk- I'm over here doing the wave by myself. You know, what are you going to do? No mask on. I lit the mask. So that's it. Do me a favor. Download the DraftKings. We got great fucking games tonight. I think you got fucking the Clippers against fucking Utah. You got motherfucking... Uh, the series are great. You got Atlanta, Philadelphia. You got Brooklyn against fucking Milwaukee. And that's like 0-2-2. 2-0, fucking Brooklyn killed them at home by 30 points. They had the under Sunday night. I fucking should have bet it. I fucking knew it, but I was too late. I was out with the fucking kid fucking around. But anyway, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Do yourself a favor and do me a favor, all right? 
when you sign up, use promo code Joey and you could turn a dollar into a hundred fucking dollars, okay? That's code Joey. And here's the fine print. You gotta be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, PA only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, do you have a gambling problem? I hope not. If you do, call 1-800-GAMBLER. If you're in Indiana, call 1-800-WITH-IT. But if you ain't got no motherfucking problems, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. They also have a fantasy. Don't confuse. Don't get confused. That's what I did. I downloaded the fantasy, but I ended up hitting the fucking parlay and winning a thousand bucks. I took my fucking money out, and I just kept on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and go to work. Like I told you, if you got a problem, fucking mind your business. But if you can just get away with betting 25 bucks and having a good time, DraftKings is for you. Plus, they have the casino. And that's it and that's that. I love you guys. Thank you for watching the motherfucking Uncle Joey's joint. I hope you enjoyed Robert Kelly. And I'll see you motherfuckers tip-top magoo next Monday ready to fucking go Father's Day week. I love you.